Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, as the Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Come on. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, as the Savior, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun. Until the going down of the same. Jesus, Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth. Let 
let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is meek and right to do so. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of one more day. We thank you for a chance, Lord, to come and worship, to sing, to praise, to greet each other with love. We thank you, Lord, for another day of service. Lord, bless us to recognize what you've given us. You've given us life, and you've given to us, to us this life in abundance. Lord, we look out to see what we have, and sometimes we forget to thank you. We forget to say how blessed we are because of you. Where well, things are falling around us and things are collapsing. And Lord, we have peace because we know that you are in charge of everything. Lord, we have grace because without our merit, without our work, you give us what we need and you forgive us and you are patient with us and you love us. And this is what you want us to do with others. Lord, open our eyes so that we may see this life does not belong to us. It is borrowed. It will be here for a minute and then it will be gone. Teach us what we need to know. Give us hands to serve. Give us hearts to help someone. Give us a blessing, Lord, of being cooperative and not cranky. Bless us, Lord, to find a way to make things happen, not to block them. Lord, give us your mercy so that we can give it to someone else. Lord, we thank you for all these gifts, the ones that we know of, the ones we've forgotten, and the ones we have no idea why you've given it to us. Lord, give us wisdom so that we may be good and faithful servants. Give us understanding, Lord, when difficulties arise. Let us know that you're in charge. Remind us that whatever has happened now, Lord, one day will pass. But today we have you. Today we have this solemn moment, this breath, this beauty, this hour of praise. And so we thank you for that, Lord, because tomorrow's not promised. So let us live today, Lord, as high and as bright and as beautiful as we can be. And this is our prayer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. In thine ear to us and grant us thy comes from the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew. It will be chapter 19 starting at verse 16. St. Matthew chapter 19 starting at verse 16. We have three lessons here. Listen carefully. Now, a man came up to Jesus and ask, teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus replied, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which one? The young man inquired. And Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? And Jesus answered, if you want to be perfected, if you want to be perfect, go 
and sell your possessions and give them to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. And Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, well, who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Peter answered, we have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? And Jesus said, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. From all the dwells below the skies. From all that dwells below the skies, let the high creator's rays arise. Let thy redeemer's name be sung through every land by you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. My soul be on thy guard, ten thousand foes arise, and hosts will sing in our prayer. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, in all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was the Oh, shit. 
told me I was singing when the Lord told me I was singing when the Lord he told me you don't know when and you don't know where it was just me and God and you weren't there and you don't know what the Lord told me I was crying when the Lord told me I was crying when the Lord told me you don't know when you don't know where it was just me and God because you weren't there you don't know what the Lord told me there was an old woman who was quite wise and people gave her great respect because she had lived many years and knew many things and some of the children in the neighborhood wanted to tease the old woman and to see if she was as wise as everyone said. So they, they caught a bird and said, we're going to take this bird to this old woman and we're going to tempt her. Or we're going to test her. We're going to ask her, what are we going to do with this bird? And if the old woman says, you're going to let it go, then we'll kill the bird. And if the woman says we're going to kill the bird, then we'll let it go. We'll see how wise this old woman is. So the kids caught the bird and took it to the old lady. They said, old lady, they say that you're wise. What are we going to do with this bird? Are we going to kill it or are we going to let it go? The old woman looked at them and went and sat down, looked up to heaven. She turned to the kid and said, whatever you do, it's in your hands, and it's on your heart. Have you ever lost your keys? Some of you lose your keys all the time, amen? Some of you lose your keys constantly. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. I can't keep up with my keys sometimes to save my life. I'm always losing my, well, I'm here today, so I must have found them. And I can't go anywhere until I keep up with them so I can open my house and drive my car and, and, and get my mail out of my So I have to learn to keep up with my keys. But it's real hard when you don't have your keys. You don't have access to the things that are important to you. You don't have what you need to get in, to lock up, and to move on. Amen? Very simply today, there was a young man who wanted to know about having eternal life. So he goes to Jesus, and he says to Jesus, um, what good thing must I do to obtain eternal life? Do you notice that Jesus was accessible? All you have to do is ask. Many times we don't ask, amen? We don't. We want something we won't ask. We complain about what we don't have, but we won't ask. But this man walks right up to the Son of God and said, what good thing must I do to be eternal life? And Jesus told him, there's no one good but God. Now, do you notice that he didn't ask for anybody but himself? That's all right. Sometimes you just ask for yourself. Amen? Sometimes you get for yourself. Amen? Sometimes you just hold on for yourself. You, you don't always share it with other people. That's all right. But I want you to see the attitude of this young man. He asked for something so that he could have it. Not but what we must do to have eternal life, but what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus tells him, tells him plainly, here's what you must do. You want eternal life? It, it's written down. We've been talking about it ever since you were born. If you want to have eternal life, don't murder. Uh, uh, don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false witness. Honor your mother. Honor your father. Obey 
the commandments. Jesus tells them in so many words, you have to be obedient. You have to have discipline. You have to have order. That's what the law is. You have to obey the law. You have to discipline yourself. And you have to be in order for the people around you. That's why the commandments were made. And the young man said, that's fine. I've done all that stuff. I've done that ever since I was a child. I've been obedient. I've been disciplined. And I've been in order. And he says, what do I like? What do I lack? What do I lack? Each one of us lacks something. Amen? Some of us lack humility. Hmm. Some of us lack patience. Hmm. Some of us lack forgiveness and mercy. Hmm. Some of us can't keep our garage clean. Amen? Amen. There's something all of us lack. Doesn't matter what it is. There's something we need to work on. The reason I know this is because we're still here. When God is done with us, he'll take us home. But he's not done with us yet. We still have something to work on. For Moses, Moses had to work on his anger. He had a bad temper. Breaking tablets and yelling at folks. Moses had a bad temper. That's what he needed to work on. Jonah had to work on listening to God. Jonah was always running away from God. That's what Jonah had to work on. For Samson, he had to work with this lady named Delilah. Didn't do so good. For the Pharisees, it was the practice of the law. The overpractice of the law. They knew all the laws, but their problem was the underpractice, the ability to love. Everybody has something to work on. The woman at the well, she was drinking with warm water. For Peter, it was making promises and then not following through. For Martha, it was being busy all the time and missing the lessons of the Christ. For you, well, you put that in there for yourself. For me, I got a whole list of stuff that I'm working on. For anybody who's still alive and breathing, we still have work to do. Amen? It is our tendency to point the fingers at other people. Well, she should have done this, and if she'd have just done that, <clears throat> and if they we're always trying to take care of somebody else's business. What they should do, what they could do, what they're supposed to do, what they ought to do. We're always telling other people what to do. We focus on the other person and not ourselves. The kingdom of heaven is right here and it's right now. And it's inside of us. But we keep looking for the kingdom somewhere else. We want to find it where it's not. If you don't find it in here, you won't find it anyplace else. You keep looking through the sky. You're not going to find it in the sky unless you find it in your own home. So in this rich man's case, this young man, uh, the keys to the kingdom were do what God commands, uh, serve the Christ, follow him, and then sell your stuff. Give up self and look to serve. Is that simple enough? Give up self and look to serve. Study. Study. Study to find yourself approved of the eternal. Look inside yourself before expecting anything from anybody else. And Jesus said, if you, not your neighbor, not your mother, not the man down the street, but if you want to be perfected, you have to sell your possessions. Give your possessions to the poor and then come follow me. Come learn from me. Come and tarry with me. Come and work with me. Leave the world and join the workings of the Holy Spirit. Amen? When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. 
Jesus had given him the keys to the kingdom, and the young man gave the keys right back to him. What do you need to work on? What do you need to complete? What do you need to finish? What do you need to make God smile? I don't know what it is. But if you want to know, all you have to do is approach the master. Lord, what must I do? Not to be just saved, not just to have eternal life, but what must I do to focus on me and not on the other person? It's a personal talk that you have to talk to with God. I can't answer for you. Mm -hmm. The neighbor can't answer for you. You have to talk to God all by yourself, and he'll give you the keys so that you can get into the kingdom. But don't be like the young man. Don't ask God for something and then give it back to him. If you got the keys, hold on to them. Because they open doors. They open possibilities that are just for you. If you have something, be grateful for it. Some of you have health now, amen? Some of you have the ability to go buy food. Some of you are not in warfare. Some of you have not been flooded out. You're not storms ravaged. Some of you are blessed beyond measure. And yet you still complain. God has given you the keys to the kingdom. Hold on to them. And don't let them go. You don't know what the Lord told me. You don't know what the Lord has told me. You don't know when and you don't know where. Because it was just me and the Lord and you weren't there. You don't know what the Lord told me. Lord, thank you for giving me direction. Thank you for giving me correction. Thank you, Lord, for letting me look in the mirror of my soul to see who I am and what I should do. Lord, bless me to stay still and not point to someone else and tell them what they should do until I've done what I needed to do for me. If you do that, Lord, I'll be blessed. I'll give you the honor and the glory and the praise, and I'll give it in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen.